Shalom, Rastafarine, Rasiadimnos, Tefarine. I am Wendem Yadam of the Lineage of Society. I want to touch on Rastafari. Now, we've touched on Rastafari previously, but we want to make this particular message a little more specific, and it's to respond to, as well as to address, a very important misconception or misunderstanding. First of all, I am not, quote, Jamaican. Many people say, well, you must be Jamaican. And some say, well, you're not even Ethiopian. And, and, and are still in confusion about who they are. And the identity confusion of the lost sheep is, is, is very serious. It's very wicked, but it's very serious. And it's, it's the main part of the problem, the lack of knowledge of self or who we are in its proper context. And Rastafari, when we speak about Rastafari, Rastafari is not Jamaican. Rastafari is Ethiopian, right? But moreover, in the prophetic sense, vis-a-vis -vis the new name, according to Revelation, Rastafari is universal. Rastafari is universal. And this is something very important that has not been really addressed properly. And we have sought to, and perhaps we have not done do justice to this point as well. And hopefully we can correct whatever injustice we may have done or not doing full justice to this particular point of Rastafari. The Rastafari is not Jamaican as the world or as the media. You see there is the Rasta. There's a difference between Rasta and Rastafari. Rastafari. In fact, what is very interesting is that we find our African-American roots of Rastafari, and it's been preserved for us in literature, some very important pieces of literature, some of them we've touched on, um, We the Black Jews or, or The Black Jews of Harlem, um, which is a very important book which speaks about one of our foremost of uh, uh, rabbis or rabbis, a black rabbi named um, Wentworth Arthur Matthews, who established the Commandment Keepers Congregation of Harlem. He also made those positive identifications with his imperial majesty and particularly with Ethiopia. And this is where we get the identification of us as Ethiopian Hebrews, as Ethiopian Hebrews. We have introduced a little clarification on that, that we are the Falashas. We are Falashas. We as the lost sheep over here in the Americas and the Caribbean, we are the Falashas of the West because we know of the Falashas of the East, the Beta Israel. But when we study the scriptures, and it's very important for us to study the scriptures, what we find, and this is a particular chapter that we've touched on earlier, we'll touch on again right here, chapter um, 23 of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 23. It says in Jeremiah 23, verse 8, but the Lord liveth, or Jah liveth, Jalev children, yea, yea, awo, awo, jalev. In Jeremiah chapter 23, it's a very important chapter. I think it's a very significant, very significant chapter because not only in the prophetic um, um, foretelling of this present time that we're in, especially when we have this groundation, before we get into this groundation on this, let's first touch on these, these books here. This one is from Babylon, from Babylon right here to Timbuktu, and we've spoken on this. It's a history of the, of the ancient black races, including the black Hebrews. It shows how we over here in the Americas and the Caribbean have gone from Babylon to Timbuktu. We're great people, but our great history is, is greatly underrated, and it's not told. And these particular books are very important to teach our children and should be a part of any curriculum to our children, to our black children, our black youth. Because if they don't understand this, they really have no chance in this so-called overcoming this modern, wicked, evil, Babylonian world. You understand? The second book is this book, which I think is particularly significant in this present time. The Valley of the Tri-Bones, or the conditions that face 
Black People in America. Now, both of these respective books right here, both, this is the first one uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu, and this is the second one right here, The Valley of the Dry Bones, both by um, Rudolph Windsor. This book is significant in the sense that it explains to us how we got here, you know what I'm saying, who we are, how we got here. This gives us a history of our past, you know what I'm saying, and the various civilizations and the various peoples from East Africa, from the Middle East to East Africa, coming to the West Africa, and then coming across the Trans-Ethiopic Ocean slave trade to the Americas and the Caribbean. So this gives us, this is like a, a history of our people. This is the suppressed, lost history of who we are as so-called black people in the Americas and the Caribbean. And then this brings it up to date, the Valley of the Dry Bones, which of course, as you might know, is based on a prophetic word in um, Ezekiel about the dry bones, where... Um, the prophet Ezekiel asks, can these um, dry bones live? Because we are dead. You understand? We, 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 we are dead in, 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 in this, in this uh, system of things. We are dead to the living knowledge of who we are as a people. Now, Rastafari, Rastafari is a revelation. And Rastafari is not just a Jamaican thing. You understand? This is, this is where it's got twisted. You understand that it's a Jamaican thing. Jamaica has a very important role in the revelation of Rastafari within this region. But it's very significant for us to point out the African-American roots of Rastafari, you understand, in this region. Because there are documents that point out to us. Now, remember, these are some historical books that are very important um, for our education, the education of our children from Babylon to Timbuktu and the uh, Valley of the Dry Bones. Very important books. All right? Um, you can get it from our website. You can get it from Amazon.com. You can get it from any good black bookstore. And these are books that needs to be put into the curriculum of education. If the, if the school is not teaching it, then the parents at home should teach it and should begin to teach it as soon as possible, as soon as possible from, from the cradle. The, 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 the pregnant mama need to read this, you understand, needs to read this with the baby in her womb. This is how important these books are. Um, as they will open us up now, so when we're reading the Bible, we're reading the prophetic words of the Bible, we can understand the context. Because, see, we're looking at the false pictures, the whitewashed images, and this is perpetrating a lie. This is perpetrating a lie upon us. Therefore, this is what makes our people live and want to live in the image you understand, or after the pattern, what the Bible says, the image of the beast. You understand, where we're living in the image of, 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 of the beast, basically. Um, and w how white supremacy has treated us as black people and continues to do so. I mean, it's shocking. Hank Williams Jr. makes a statement that Barack Obama is like Adolf Hitler and he's the enemy, so forth and so on. Where do you think this comes from? This comes from 400 plus years of Willie Lynchism. This shows that the virus, the disease is still there and it's ready to break out at any ungodly moment. You understand? And it will break out. And if you understand and see the signs and see what's going on, if you see what's going on, then, then you should be well aware of what's going on. Now, speaking of the African-American roots of Rastafari, I want to touch on this book, too, the, the real facts about Ethiopia, the real facts about Ethiopia. This was written by um, J.A. Rogers, J.A. Rogers. Um, he uh, wrote um, from, I think, Man to Superman. Um, he also uh, wrote um, Nature Knows No Color Line and a lot of other very important works. And this particular work goes back to, I think, the 19... Um, the 19... Um, 20s or the 1930s, a very early work. And we want to um, quote from this book when we do the, the vid 
is a vid that we want to respond because many say, well, the Ethiopians, the East Africans don't accept us. They think they're superior, so forth and so on. They're in a delusion. They're in a delusion. My brothers and sisters, they're in a delusion. That's why that, that, that once uh, region of the world that was like the Garden of Eden, you see, it, it has turned like a desert. It has turned like a desert. And if you read um, and study Leviticus, I think it's chapter 26, it says, whenever our enemies, and, and they could be black-skinned people, but they're black devils, whenever our enemies are in the superiority, you know, and our land would turn and the land would not yield, the land would turn like a desert. So that famine that was occurring towards the end of Hyla Selassie's reign was a very important sign. But what they did was put the blame on the king of kings. They blamed him for what was a sign of God's word and the prophetic sign of the times. Because look at it. Famines have not stopped. Famines have only gotten worse, you know, and you can't blame Haile Selassie for that. But the people back in the 1970s, they were willing to believe the lie, and they believed the lie because they were liars. But these documents right here shows us some of our roots, the African-American roots of Rastafari. This book in, in, in particular is, is very interesting because it has a chapter in here that we would like to quote from is called um, how how do the Ethiopians uh, feel towards the Afro Americans the Afro Americans a very interesting article and this is from the Ethiopia Imperial Ethiopia Holy Ethiopia True Ethiopia the Ethiopia we see today is 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 not the true Ethiopia. It's, it's a post-traumatic Ethiopia. It reminds me of Jeremiah. Um, Jeremiah, when we look at lamentations concerning the Ethiopia of today, um, it's like when in, uh, was it Zephaniah or 2 and 12, ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. That is a very true word. For what reason? Because they have, they have turned, they have turned apostate. You understand, to the true truth. It says, how doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is she become a widow? She that was great among the nations. We're speaking about holy Ethiopia. She who was great among the nations. And princess among the provinces. How is she become tributary? How is she become tributary? How has she become a tributary? In other words, how is she paying taxes now to others and depending on so-called world handouts? How has she become a widow? You understand, when a woman becomes a widow, what has happened? Her husband has been killed or has died. Her husband has been either, either killed, murdered, or he has died. And Ethiopia's true husband the conquering line, the tribe of Judah, Moa, and Bessazem, Negeda, Yehuda, Kadamawi, Haila, Selassie, Siyuma, Egziyavi, Her, Nugusa, Neges, Ze, Ethiopia, is that husband. But now Ethiopia is a widow. She who was great among the nations and princess among the provinces has become a tributary, has become a tributary, like a beggar, a beggar nation because she has turned her back on the Holy Covenant, the Kedus Al Kidan, the Holy Covenant. Judah has gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtake her in the straits. This is the situation of black folks. From our great past, we look at our great past, we look at us today, and this is, this is an analog of who we are. Yet the pastors and the preachers will get up every Sunday in the pulpit. They'll be talking about a so-called Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They'll be talking about mainly the whitewash, the false, the antichrist, so-called Jesus, the other, you know what I'm saying, Jesus, not our black Lord and Savior. And that is a key part of the problem.
You understand? Not our being Christian, not our being religious or spiritual, but because we're ignorant of who we are and we do not know our great history of a people, how we got here, who we were before we got here to this hemisphere, from Babylon to Timbuktu. And therefore now we are dwelling per proverbially and prophetically in the valley of the dry bones. The conditions, what are these conditions that face black people in America? And though this book is dated, in other words, it was written, I think, in, back in the 80s, you'll be amazed when you read it today because you'll be saying to yourself, 1988, you'll be saying, and this is the brother right here, Rudolph R. Windsor. Get a, get a snapshot of that brother right there, Rudolph R. Windsor. This, this is a name that should be known by our children. Our children should know this name. You see, but this is all part of the suppression. You understand the suppression of black history. When Black History Month rolls around, who is talking about this? You understand? This is the half of the story that hasn't been told to us. Along with this, the real facts about Ethiopia by J.A. Rogers. He's the one that wrote Nature Knows No Color Line and has brought out a lot of other significant facts about we as black people, including the British and the European royalties, all emanate from the black nobility. This is the reason why there's that connection. You know what I mean? There's that connection. But they don't explain that connection. They suppress that connection. Another important book from that particular period of time, all this is a this is the basics, the crux of the African-American roots of Rastafari, that Rastafari is not Jamaican in that sense. Rastafari is not just African-American. Rastafari is essentially Ethiopian Hebrew, it's essentially the fulfillment of God's word when he says he shall have a new name have a new name. Now, you read this in the book of Revelation. Let's just touch on this quickly within the time that we have. Um, Revelation chapter, let's go to Revelation chapter, um, chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse, um, let's go to the church of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is known as brotherly love. You understand? This is one thing that we as as black men used to have brotherly love, but we've been divided and conquered. You know what I'm saying? Where we get the black on black crime. Black men, young black men that don't know anything about who they are, killing each other. You understand? Know Living in the image of the beast, of Satan, becoming black devils and killing each other because we've lost that brotherly love. But the, the message to Philadelphia, which is the sixth church, is the true church. In the professing church, in other words, there's a there's a black church that professes to be the Christian church, but there's a true church in that black church. Now, that true church in that black church is really the church of Rastafari, because that's the church with that new name. Now, how do we know this? Well, it's very important that we know this based on the, the evidence. You see this book right here. This book right here is um, Ethiopia, the missing, the missing link in African history. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia, the missing link in African history. You see the name right down there? That name is Reverend, Reverend Sterling M. Means, Reverend Sterling M. Means. The interesting thing we'll find out when we really study our story, our history, is that in the early days of Rastafari, the majority of the proclaimers of the message of Rastafari, first of all, were African-American, and they were African-American preachers. You understand? That was the true church that was in the professing church that we read about in Revelation chapter 3, known as the Church of Philadelphia. Let's see, see the title page right here. Right? That's a very significant book right there, written by an African-American preacher, reverend. You understand? Have you even heard about this book before? Most black folks haven't. You understand? Most of the very well-educated black folks haven't read this book. Now, this book was copyrighted in 1945. It says right here, 1945, although it might have an earlier printing, 
but in, in 1945. And, and the author of this book is the author of four other books we have here. And, and I want you to listen to this. Listen to the other books that this Reverend, Reverend Sterling M. Means. So when people try to say, well, um, certain Ethiopians or East Africans don't accept us, or, or that Rastafari is just a Jamaican thing and you're African-American, they don't know the half of the story. They just don't know what they don't know. And maybe they'll be informed and check this out. Don't take our word. Don't believe our word. Go check this out. Trust what we're saying. Hear what we're saying and go check it out for yourself and you'll find the truth. The author of this book, Sterling M. Means, Reverend Sterling M. Means, African-American Reverend Sterling M. Means from the 1940s, he was also the author of The Deserted Cabin, The German Warlord, and The British Lion. He was the author of The Black Devils and other poems. And he was the author of Africa and World Peace. Now, though these books are dated, they still remain true. But this is his crowning work, in our opinion. This particular work right here is his crowning work, in our opinion. And this book is, Afri is Ethiopia and the Missing Link in African History by Reverend Sterling and Means. It was originally published by the Atlantis Publishing Company, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, this particular book. And this is also for my African-American brothers and sisters who, when we dialogue, you know, we know the Jamaicans and the other brothers and sisters in the ass. We know we, we, we all family. They've divided and conquered us. But there's a lot of confusion and ignorance. And, and see, it's that ignorance that was the original sin. You understand? The sin of the soul, as Hermes Trismegistus said, is its ignorance. And the only remedy for that is knowledge. Knowledge, too, in itself is power. Knowledge, too, in itself is power. The statement is not knowledge is power, but knowledge also in itself is power. This is a very important book right here. But let's touch on this professing church, right, to understand that within the black church, of the 1920s, of the 1930s, of the 1940s, there was a true church, right? And the church, that our church is that Philadelphia church, Philadelphia, because about brotherly love. This is something that is a, a very important refrain for black Americans, African Americans, and black people. That idea of brotherly love, we can see manifestations of that even in the, in the early 60s and, and throughout our struggles here in the American, our sojourn in this land that's not our own. We're in a land that's not our own because we're that people spoken of in Genesis chapter 15, chapter 15. Now here in uh, Revelation, Johannes Arai, Mi'raf, Source, um, Sabat, chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. Let's, let's just read this together. It's very important to understand the, the true Rastafari, the first church of Rastafari that was known on record was established and found in Louisiana, New Orleans. Most people don't even know that. The first church of Rastafari, we're talking about back in the 20s and 30s, the first church of Rastafari, because within the professing black or Negro church, there was a true church, and that true church was the church of Rastafari. Now, Simu, Simu, listen, listen if you will. The message to Philadelphia is this, the true church in the professing church, verse 7, and it reads, the and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, these things saith he that is holy, he that is kedus, he that is true, he that hath the keys of David, of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth, I know thy works. Behold, look and see. I have set before thee an open door, and no man 
can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, look and see. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, look and see. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. And there's even this partial fulfillment of all of this when we look at the black Jews of Harlem. We look at the story of the black Jews of Harlem and the African Hebrews and, and, and other manifestations of the black Hebrew Israelites or the Ethiopian Hebrews in the Americas and in the Caribbeans. But moving forward, verse 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Who was more patient than black folks experiencing crucifixions, lynchings on a daily basis. Who was more patient than our ancestors and than we? I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Some say we're coming into this time of tribulation even right now as we as we um, as we speak, my brothers and sisters, stay tuned for the next part of this because we're getting the signal that we need to recharge. So we're taking a pause, a pause um, for the cause, a pause for the cause. We're going to continue with this uh, with this uh, portion of scripture. So stay tuned.